Thanks for joining us to this tutorial. Together with uh, Jonas, we will learn about valve monitoring of reciprocating compressors. He will explain to us the main differences of the two monitoring techniques. One is cylinder vibration, the other one is direct pressure measurement. Jonas, explain us your little graph here. <laughs> Thanks, Joost. So, why are we doing this? Basically, 90% of all problems on compressors are about the valves. So that is, that's making it the weakest element in the chain. So there's two different ways to monitor these that are usually used. The first way is cylinder vibrations. Means we are mounting a little vibration acceleration probe on top of the cylinder between the valves mm -hmm. to monitor the vibrations that the valve actions produce. So that is the little red curve, the vibration curve that we are seeing here. The whole picture is the 360 degree view that is already explained in the video from Thomas. So I'll just, I'll just go over it once again shortly. What do we see? We are beginning at zero degree crank angle in the top dead center, means the piston is in the very top of the cylinder. Then we are pulling it back to 180 degrees and then we are going uh, to the front again to 360 degrees. So one revolution, one process cycle. We are having the pressure from suction pressure which is compressed to discharge pressure level. So these curves here. And we are seeing the dynamic pressure in both compression chambers. It's a double acting compressor. So we are having the head end pressure in blue and the crank end pressure in white. That is the whole picture. What we are measuring if we only have cylinder vibration probes on it, so the first way to monitor, we are measuring the vibration peaks that are created by the valve actions. And during one revolution, there is usually on a double acting compressor eight valve actions, so four on each uh, side of the compression chambers. So first thing, I'll start here at usually around 50 degree, which can shift, but we'll come to that later. What do we see? In the head and side, the pressure will drop during the uh, expansion phase and the pressure, the blue line, will drop below suction pressure level. That is making our suction valve on the head and side opening, creating a peak around this degree point of time or degree of crank angle. At the same time, in the crank end side, the pressure will rise and rise above the discharge pressure level, which is here. And at this point of time, the discharge valve will open. That is creating usually a higher peak because we are at a higher pressure level, so there's more energy. Then when we come to the bottom dead center, the BDC, the discharge valve crank end, which has opened here, and the suction valve head end, which has opened here, are closing again, which is usually a smaller peak. Then if we go further, on the head end side, the pressure, no, first on the crank end side, the pressure is decreasing, we drop below suction pressure level and the suction valve crank end side will open. Then at the same time, the pressure at the head end side will rise above the discharge pressure level and also here the discharge valve on the head end side is opening. So that is creating this high peak and then the whole thing is repeated for every revolution. So on the top dead center, there's the last two valves closing again. All in all, there's eight actions that we can see in this pressure or in this vibration curve. So as I understand, the opening phase produces larger peaks than the closing? Yeah, that's usually the point because there's a higher pressure level on the opening time, which is, ha which is having more energy mm -hmm. in the system and that is usually why they're opening harder than closing. Okay, so this reading is a good condition, reference values. Yeah. How, can, how, how are you able now to detect impending failures? What we usually do then is we are looking at the peaks in these points of time using the segmentation already explained by Thomas in that video. Um, what we are doing, we, we are just taking this point of time and we are trending the maximum peak, the absolute maximum of the vibration level in here. Mm -hmm. So this is usually stable during a normal operation because these vibrations are normal and belong to the process. So good vibrations. But if these are in a certain point rising over the time, I can see that your valve behavior is changing. And changing behavior 
is then an indication for where or for a broken valve, maybe a broken plate, whatever can be with a valve. So that is how we monitor the different valves, because we know where every valve is opening. Mm -hmm. Which is hard to do if you don't know exactly where your valve is opening, because you don't know your dynamic pressure. And if you start to play around with your process, maybe by active valve control or by um, bypasses on your compressor or whatever you can do in controlling your process. Because if that happens, these points of time will shift with your change pressure and with your change process. And then it's very hard to monitor those, so those peaks won't be at the same point of time anymore. You as a vibration analyst, would you say that the vibration analysis gives you a more accurate um, or meaningful monitoring result compared to the pressure reading on, and pressure analysis, or is it vice versa? Um, the, best would, the best practice would be to use both, because both of them alone will give you an indication what's happening, but only both together will give you like a very clear picture what's happening because you can see what the valve is doing by monitoring the vibrations and you can see what the process is doing. So the process is like is triggering the valve to open or close. So comparing the process to the vibrations will give you the big picture and, and the full picture. Mm -hmm. If you only have one of both, you will have indications that can lead to a right analysis and to, to the right failure mode but you will never be 100% sure. So what I would recommend everybody is not only to use the vibration, and, but also to use the pressure in combination with the vibrations. Because what we are seeing on the pressure is how is my complete process behaving and what is actually happening in the cylinder, mm -hmm. in the cylinder chamber itself. So for example, if one of the valves have a leakage which is lowering your efficiency, and if you leave that over time, everything will heat up because uh, gas flow, backflow, um, which can damage the valves and the compressor also. So for example, we are having a leakage. You, in, in a very early stage, you might not see it on the vibration at all, but it's already there. But on the pressure, you can directly see, if I have a leakage, one of those pressure levels or one of those points will not be reached at the same time anymore. So for example, this point of time here, when I break through the discharge pressure level, that is usually during a stable process also at, uh, always at the same time. So if this is suddenly coming later, so we are breaking through the discharge pressure level later than usual, what could it be? That means my process is slower, so we take a longer time to compress the gas, a longer time for the valve to open because we are reaching the level later. That would already mean that the vibrations are coming later. But then which, which valve would it be if the vibrations don't really change and just shift a little bit? If this one is coming later, means my compression is not as fast as usual, which means we are losing gas somewhere and therefore efficiency. We are losing gas means during the compression phase, there's gas flowing back into the suction pipe, into the low pressure level pipe. That usually means I have a leakage on the suction valve level. The other way around, if this one, if this point here will come earlier, means we are at the high pressure level earlier than usual, which means we are getting gas from somewhere. So that is usually an indication for a discharge valve issue. And that is only one point that we are monitoring in the complete curve here in the PV diagram. There's more than 30 analysis we can do right now and comparing to the vibration levels and for example also to temperatures. And then we're getting a complete full picture of what's happening and how good my process is. So that sounds, when you talk about 30 analysis for the PV diagram, pretty complex to monitor these little pieces of valves. True. Um, for our audience, what is the key takeaway? The key takeaway, if you only use vibration or if you only need pressure or use pressure analysis, you will have good indications for what's happening on your process and on your, on your compressor, but you will never get the full clear picture. So if you really want to know and if you want a fast analysis, which is usually the case if you're the operator, I would recommend to use both to get the full picture and compare what is happening. 
So never use only one signal. Use always more than one signal and everything you can get to make a full analysis. That sounds pretty comprehensive. Um, thank you for that, Jonas. You're um, welcome. I hope you enjoyed what uh, he told us, he teached us. Um, the, our next video will be about the PV diagram analysis. Um, I'm looking forward to that. If you like what you have seen and what you have heard, uh, leave your comments below in the section and um, stay tuned with Intelligent Machine Monitoring. Thanks.